Alrighty, so a little while ago I sent an email to Colin over there at uh, FAC TV, Falls Area Community Television, saying there would be no Out of My Head live stream tonight. Why? Well, I've just been procrastinating too long on drawing projects and uh, I really need to spend that time at the drawing board. The literal drawing board, uh, Cintiq in my case. <sighs> So I thought I'd just jabber at you for like 10 minutes or so in a video that will require no editing other than maybe the occasional jump cut if I uh, get distracted and, you know, spend a lot of time not talking and just thinking. But typically the, uh, the talking takes the place of the thinking in these sorts of videos. But, oh, what's going on? Somebody, well, say, Benjamin, regular viewer, commenter, and uh, prompter, Benjamin sent me a link to a video about Scarlett Johansson suing Disney because they put Black Widow on the streaming service right away uh, when she was supposed to get these you know box office performance based bonuses. So you know the better the film did in the box office, the more she would make. Her base salary for the film was twenty million dollars, but potentially if the film made enough at the box office, she could get another fifty million. $70 million to an actor? <laughs> I mean, come on. That's ridiculous. I mean, that should be the budget of a film, $70 million. You know, that shouldn't be the compensation for one actor. That's just dumb. So, you know, I have absolutely zero sympathy for her, you know, in that she's not getting enough money for what she does. She gets, you know, lavish. She gets a lavish reimbursement for what she does. But does that mean that what Disney did was right? No, I mean, legally, she probably has a, a leg to stand on. You know, when she signed that contract, she was expecting the film to be distributed in a certain way, and it wasn't. And, you know, it was to her financial disadvantage and to Disney's advantage. Basically, Disney gets to take money out of her pocket by doing that. You know, so in that sense, yeah, Disney's the bad guy here. But to me, this is a story without a good guy, because none of the none of the content on the topic even touches the fact that you know, Marvel films are starting to suck, and they're starting to suck because they're starting to get woke. And so, you know, I haven't seen the Black Widow movie. I have no desire to see it. You know, once it's free on Disney Plus, I might watch it, but I'm not paying for it. Um, you know, it just seems like Kevin Feige over at Marvel, he's gotten woke or at least he's gotten convinced that he's got to you know marvel projects have to uh, denigrate <laughs> straight white men and people who like you know science fiction and uh nerdy projects of old you know if if you liked the the marvel films of the first 10 years of the mcu well then you're problematic and you need to have your nose rubbed in some shit and you know the sort of shit that we're talking about is black panther captain marvel uh infinity or endgame uh Avengers, that's what I'm looking for, Avengers Endgame, or Ant-Man and the Wasp, basically, you know, you, you just, you can't have those heroic power fantasies of old, now they have to come wrapped in this nasty, you know, anti-colonial, anti-patriarchy, I don't know what you even call it, it's just, I think what I'm getting at is that all this talk of, you know, whether Black Widow um, you know, how the, the revenue comes in, depending on whether people see it in the theater or whether they watch it on Disney Plus, is completely avoiding the, uh, the reality, which is to say that there's not nearly as much excitement about, you know, Marvel's output these days, the Disney Marvel, you know, MCU output these days, as there was a few years ago. And I think it's largely because, you know, the movies used to primarily aim to entertain, and now they entertain, now they, they aim to scold. And, you know, people aren't that interested in paying money to be scolded. <laughs> I, mean, I suppose some people are, uh, but it's a niche market, and you know, it, there's there's no amount of scolding which is going to make it a mainstream market. All right, I said this wouldn't be about fasting, but um, I'll just touch on one aspect of that, and that's willpower. You know, people have said to me, um, you know, I, I just don't have the willpower to go that long without eating. And it's weird because for me, fasting is the uh, the low willpower solution. What to me requires a heck of a lot more willpower is, you know, trying to have some reasonable estimate of the number of calories that I'm eating and then to stop eating 
or curtail my eating, you know, throughout the day when I think a certain calorie threshold has been exceeded. To me, one, that's complicated and it is it requires more attention that I'm willing to devote to it. But also it just it requires a certain type of willpower which I haven't been able to muster recently. Ironically though, the 19 hour you know, daily fast, the, the intermittent fasting that I did for years. And then it didn't seem to require a lot of willpower. I, you know, I guess pandemic days, living by myself, being in the apartment all day. Um, I don't know, that just doesn't work for me anymore. I've, I've considered returning to it and some something in my head, much like the people, I guess, who are responding to, you know, my current three day fast, they, something in their head says, uh-uh, can't do it. <laughs> not even gonna try because we know that's not gonna happen. And that's kind of where I am with uh, intermittent fasting. But, you know, in terms of willpower, like I've been procrastinating on, on drawing. You know, I get paid to draw. <laughs> I can bill for, you know, if I sit down at, at the drawing board and draw, then I can submit an invoice and bill for it. And it's money that goes to my account, you know, and I pay rent with it. And it's, it's a good gig. And yet, the longer I do it, the less enthusiasm I have for it, the more I find myself procrastinating, pulling, you know, these long sessions to, uh, to get projects done by deadlines, missing deadlines. It's just like, whatever you do for your day job turns into a drag. I should put that all in the first person, though. Whatever I do for my primary paycheck turns into a drag, and it turns into something that I procrastinate on, which is, you know... I wish I had I had known that this was how it would be before I put all those hours and years into learning how to draw. But it's the same with podcasting. You know, when I was really into podcasting, it was uh, the thing that I was doing instead of working in insurance. You know, I was supposed to be driving around in my suit and tie talking to people about insurance because that was what made the money. And instead, I was, you know, really enjoying the process of podcasting. But now that it's, you know, my co-day job, it's just like the drawing. I put it off, I put it off, I put it off, and then when it comes time, you know, I've actually got the energy and the motivation to sit down at the mic and, you know, and churn out a, an hour-long piece of audio podcast while I owe it to the Vault subscribers. You know, so <laughs> my most recent free podcast, I think, is from what, May or is it March? No, it's just May. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't March, but still, it's been months since I put out a free one. And, uh, you know, again, the next time I sit down at the mic and I churn something out, it's got to go behind the, the paywall, you know? It's got to be for the Vault subscribers. Alrighty. So, what about willpower? You know, I watched um, a video today <laughs> about uh, self-help and the destructive side of the self-help industry. And some of the things that this um, this vlogger talked about were one, the sort of addictive quality. You know, the, the when you finish a self help book and you feel really motivated, <laughs> the thing you primarily feel motivated to do is go out and buy another self help book, and read that and get that same buzz from the next book that you got from the previous one, rather than to applying all the lessons of the previous book, you know, into your life and, and making things better for yourself or making yourself better, as the, uh, the focus tends to be these days. Another thing mentioned was the, the motivation to do things that, that like pseudo-tasks, pseudo-actions. Like instead of, you know, if you want to be a successful insurance salesman, um, don't worry so much about, you know, your shirt or your tie or your jacket. It's like if you're wearing a shirt, if you're wearing a tie, you're good. Pick up the phone, make some calls, set some appointments, you know, get get it going. But a pseudo action or a pseudo, you know, task, something that feels like you're doing something, but you're really not, uh, you know, organizing presentations or designing business cards for yourself, uh, all the things that, you know, in theory, it seems like maybe these things would be of benefit to you, you know, in your work. If you don't do the unpleasant but necessary parts of the job, then all those other actions don't account for it. They don't amount to anything, and you haven't really accomplished anything by doing them. And, you know, you've got no business feeling good 
for having done them. Although, you know, you certainly have every right to feel good. Good feelings. <laughs> I say you have every right to feel good, but you, no other human being is accountable, you know, to you for failing to facilitate your having the feelings that you want to have. So it could be your parents, it could be your kids, it could be your spouse or your desired spouse or, you know, whatever. Um, nobody else has to play. There, there's no mandatory part that anybody else has to play in your feeling safe, respected, uh, confident. I mean, people can't threaten you, but, you know, the whole I don't feel safe thing is typically not a result of people making threats these days. It's typically a result of people... Uh, using unapproved language or just failing to agree vigorously enough with, you know, the uh, <laughs> the current program. Anyway, willpower, self-improvement, you know, <laughs> I like the, uh, the Fight Club and Project Mayhem uh, anti-motivational speeches. You are the same decaying organic matter as everything else. You are nothing special. You know, and whether you accomplish, you know, in air quotes, accomplish something or not with your life, ultimately irrelevant. Ultimately, we're all dust. Ultimately, the universe will expand to such a degree that nobody outside the local group of our galaxies will ever even see our galaxy. They'll never see our solar system, They'll, you know, much less see our planet, much less see your little piece of it, much less see your little piece of it for that infinitesimal fraction of time when you are alive and doing stuff, you know, accomplishing stuff. This isn't a nihilistic message, this is just a reframing. Pull back, you know, watch a video about showing you the scales of things, like the scale of the distance between the planets. Don't even have to leave our solar system. Just the distance between the Earth and the Moon is, is counterintuitive. People tend to think it's a lot closer than it is. All right. So, if anything that I've said provokes a reaction, well, react. Uh, although, if, if you react with by hitting the like button, that would be awesome. Well, maybe... Maybe saying that would be awesome is uh, underselling the awesomeness of awesomeness. Devaluing awesomeness. I would appreciate it <laughs> if you click the like button. All right. Going back inside. Talk to you soon.